Yes, nice to be invited. Thank you. Uh, we are Jørgen and Sven Erik from Pripolim. In Pripolim, we do a bunch of different things. Uh, one of the things we like best is to make puppets and puppet films. And uh, we're going to try to convince you that uh, all techniques from child children TV from the 70s is still ruling. So here's a little snippet of uh, what we're doing. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so that's a short like summary of uh, what we've done so far. Um, but to make films like we do, uh, you need, of course, a studio, and um, you need a lot of uh, other craftsmen and women, uh, like uh, puppet builders and set designers and light designers, sound people camera crew, everything, lots of people. And um, yeah, there's uh, a lot of time spent with uh, burnt fingertips, uh, hot glue, of course. And then you have to find out different kind of materials that you're gonna mix. And what kind of glue is sticking this plastic tube to uh, this uh, felted wool and and all kinds of stuff that we have to find out. So there's a lot of um, uh, testing and experimenting, and uh, that's what's fun. Um, but there's a lot of time failing as well, a lot of time feeling wasted. Um, and uh, that can be really frustrating sometimes, especially uh, when we are you know, a commercial group, we try to make money as well. And uh, especially when you spend days and nights trying to make something work. If you are designing a puppet and uh, technically uh, you want it to function in a way. But then after spending <laughs> many too many hours trying to make it work just like that, you find out it doesn't work. So um, you have to start over, try to make it simpler maybe, or make the expressions better. And then you have to go to the film director and say, sorry, it doesn't work. And that's frustrating, uh, especially uh, when you know that you have a limited uh, lump of money and uh, you know that we're not gonna make any money on this project either. Uh, <laughs> like so many other projects. Um, but of course, um, it's all rooted in what uh, Joran said. Uh, it's a deep fascination of you know the old classics. Caprino and uh, Jim Henson, all of them that 
we grew up with um, are still very much an inspiration for all of us. So um, uh, we feel that it is still valuable and there's um, something that we want to develop further. But uh, very often you can see that uh, the pace in this old production are too slow for today's uh, uh, standards. Uh, there are still something timeless and magical about these old uh, movies that inspires us. And this is, of course, uh, I think uh, it's, it's much about the handmade details that uh, really inspires us. In uh, our daily life as communicators in a commercial world, we help our clients communicate uh, with their target audience in an engaging and meaningful and well manner. But uh, very often, and very often, the best way to uh, <laughs> to get the message uh, to get the message across uh, is to make the right kind of person say the right kind of thing in a camera, very often a mobile camera, and. Uh, make it very simple, put it in the right channels, and uh, put some vector animation, very cost-effective vector animation on, and uh, boom, there it is. So why are we not doing that? Yeah, uh, because there are so much easier ways to, to make exciting movies. You know, you could go all digital, so why are we not doing that? Uh, we are, of course, making vector animations and uh, we make uh, mobile movies as well. But sometimes, sometimes we have clients, luckily, who need something extra. Um, and um, that's when we say, why not try something like this? Um, because when we work with puppets, we can uh, take away all you know, sex, gender, ethnicity, all that kind of things that people are, um, you know, stuck with. We can uh, we can talk about all this uh, touchy stuff because we have puppets, and the puppets they can do and say things that people can't say that easy. So um, that that's something that we have done a lot. Um, uh, so. We had this client, uh, Milieu Directorate, or the um, Norwegian Environment Agency. They um, came to us and said, we need uh, you to make a film for us. This was about four years ago, and uh, the problem uh, for the Fox is that it's very few of them. In Scandinavia, it's about 200 inlets, and uh, they are very endangered. <laughs> So the target audience uh, for this film was <laughs> was young people at school, and uh, the problem was that they wanted to make a documentary film about this fox. And with 200 individuals uh, in Scandinavia, uh, we didn't uh, really uh, thought that as an opportunity to uh, walk into the mountains and try to find these individuals. And uh, also, David Attenborough and BBC has destroyed the market for storytelling uh, with uh, animals, <laughs> using a Norwegian budget on each film. So we uh, we uh, suggested why not use uh, puppets and make a road movie out of it, and uh, that was applauded, and it came out to be very popular. So popular, popular that this year uh, we uh, are making a new film. And uh, the typical <coughs> clip of him uh, <laughs> way of doing things is that uh, we tripled the budget, but we quadrupled our intentions and uh, <laughs> ambitions. So uh, we probably will lose money on this as well. <laughs> <laughs> but now we have scaled up and we have a lot of animals and uh, mostly uh, uh, this time it's about uh, the lemmings. And uh, uh, the lemmings, uh, how they are feeding the whole ecosystem in, uh, in the mountain. This should play. Yes. Uh, so now we are meeting uh, the same foxes uh, we met last time, but now they are grown-ups and they have uh, children. And? That's an eagle. Yeah, 
That's an eagle, or shadow of an eagle. Yes? Yeah. So uh, we believe that, you know, in our digital world, um, we think it's refreshing uh, to watch something that is not um, super smooth and clean and perfect. Uh, when we leave traces of how things are made uh, and how it works, it reminds us that it's made by human. It's like with bicycles. I think people appreciate seeing, you know, the traces of you know, the craft and how things are made. And um, yeah, I think um, it's nothing that, uh, it's not something that will, you know, disappear. Um, we know that when we build these puppets and the sets and we invest a lot of time and energy in it, um, it can be left out, you know. Uh, we know that. Um, and even if we plan it in detail, uh, we, at the same time, we appreciate, you know, all the mistakes and outtakes, and we take risks. You know, we 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 uh, really appreciate what is happening in the process, and sometimes we have, you know, lucky accidents that, or someone has a good idea on set, and say. Let's try that. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the magical about this because a lot of things happen during during shooting. In this scene, uh, we should have some puppets uh, playing around. It was uh, in the script. It says they were rolling, but uh, <laughs> it occurred to us that it was yeah. difficult to have a puppet rolling with a hand up in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have to find out something else. And uh, also, she was sort of spectating uh, only and yeah uh, she was just guarding the kids yeah. uh, it's that's what it said in the script uh, and I said to the, the scriptwriter uh, call Butte <laughs> with the uh, arm up yeah so uh, we we had to find some ways around it and so try to make this scene maybe a bit more interesting so I well. accidentally as Eric found so in a box uh, some uh, Table tennis rackets, and then uh, it turned out to be like this. With sound, of course. A <laughs> lot <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, much more fun to look at than. Uh, <laughs> so what we had to find out here is, you know, how do they play this ping pong ball around? Because it was really hard for them. So we tried with a string and, uh, and like this. <laughs> yeah. So we have we have a lot of fun outtakes as well. But um, this is what happens when we when we open up that in that process to just yeah let's try it let's let's try it and then this is going to be into the finished product. Um, Um, yeah, most of the productions uh, that we do is for educational purposes. But we have also um, done uh, stuff. We have, um, what do you call it, um, tools in case management, like this one. Or we have educated fish farmers about feed conversion. Um, and once we made a character, a uh, caretaker robot, make love to a copy machine. And uh, that was for the Technoport Awards, uh, and the Royal Highness was supposed to be on front row, so they were a bit uh, nervous about that. Um, we have even um, turned the beloved radio show Lunch, if you know Lunch from radio, uh, into a television series, purely for the entertainment of it. Um, and uh, that's a puppet series as well. And here we have some uh, a trailer. For that TV series. Det er lunch, og i dag skal det handle om mat igen. If 
haven't seen it yet, it's uh, on the NRK um, player. Um, it's the same approach, uh, either we uh, do commercial work or we make our own productions. Um, Kripalim, we have made um, several short films over the years, both uh, live action and 2D. Yeah, and uh, at the moment we have a film called Wanda. Uh, it uh, was finished uh, this uh, January and now on tour uh, around the world. Screened at uh, Zagreb, uh, Anima Fest Zagreb, which is uh, one of the most important animation festivals. And also in Van uh, in Switzerland now and coming to uh, Nordic Panorama uh, this autumn we recently get to know. It's a mix of uh, hand-built sets and uh, animation composed together. And uh, this is also a typical example of uh, the Clipperly method. It could be done very easily, but uh, we did it in the most difficult way <laughs> possible to uh, build sets and uh, destroy budgets. But I guess, I guess uh, it took only seven years. Maybe. Seven years. <laughs> but it's a very long film, it's uh, up to 10 minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I guess why it does uh, such a success is because of this uh, mix of techniques and uh, it, make, it makes it stand out uh, in up to other films. Uh, this is uh, not hand-built, uh, it's actually a digital 2D animation, but we mention it because this is uh, one of the projects that we really think will boost uh, Kripalim uh, in the future. We are uh, now accepted for something called Cartoon Forum, which is uh, the really most important scene for uh, pitching uh, series for the most important distributors. Uh, there will Pixar and uh, DreamWorks and all of the most important is there and uh, we were accepted to pitch this project we also have uh, a big Can canadian co-producer with us here so we really have a belief in this uh, project and this summer we are starting the uh, project uh, we're starting uh, up uh, our short film disappearing darlings together with uh, magnus osprey who is sitting here uh, this is a film a uh, very special film uh, it's a Actually, uh, um, what we call it? Uh, insect noir. Insect noir. <laughs> the world's first insect noir. It's about uh, bugs, uh, spiders, and flies uh, getting drunk. In Bobby's uh, bar. Yeah, in Bobby's bar. And uh, also, uh, this short film uh, is now developed into a TV series. We got funding from uh, Film Invest, and uh, we are finishing now a script for uh, three episodes and a treatment for the whole series. And uh, hopefully we are finished with this short film uh, during first half of next year. Okay. Very, uh, very uh, ambitious project. Hmm. So uh, hopefully all of this uh, will um, put our company and Trondheim uh, on the map internationally, hopefully. Uh, with so many talented uh, companies around the world, because it's huge around the world. In in Trondheim, Norway, um, there are not that many people doing this. So hopefully, it will also be inspiring to uh, to you, and uh, that our community will grow, because that would be really cool to put uh, Trondheim on the map, and people will look at us and say, "Hey, they're doing cool stuff in Trondheim as well." Thank you so much for uh, Thank you.